In 2012, the Walt Disney Company bought Lucasfilm, and seemingly, the only property Lucasfilm owned that they were interested in was Star Wars. Lots changed for Star Wars, with every produced piece of media, save the six main movies, the Clone Wars movie, and the Clone Wars TV show being declared non-canon. What was previously known as the Expanded Universe was defined as Legends, a sort of alternative universe to what is now considered the true canon. Though a handful of stories were allowed to finish their planned run, for the most part, the EU was essentially finished. The Old Republic, which still made money, was allowed to keep world building, but otherwise, all new Star Wars media fits within canon. And let me be clear, this isn't inherently a bad thing. We got solidified happy endings for lots of characters, and get to see new characters created by new artists. A lot of the new canon is great. Some of it is less great. But it still can feel a little weird to say that all of the happy memories you have won't be returned to, and that your favorite characters weren't actually all that great in the official story. A lot of characters have been treated much worse in the new canon. Some characters get off pretty easy, like Han and Leia. They have less happy lives, but they are ultimately not completely miserable. Other characters are unceremoniously killed, erasing the potential for interesting conflicts, like Panaka. Others still are erased from existence entirely, like, well, pretty much everybody from Legends that isn't related to Thrawn. It's hard to say just who is treated the worst by new canon. Bail Organa had most of his story minimized, and Mon Mothma went from a radical yet collected leader to a nearly spineless centrist. Some would say that Luke had it the worst, as he lost his family, his friends, his nobility, and even his struggles. But I think I'd give it to Lando Calrissian. Lando was huge when he first showed up in Empire Strikes Back. To fit in with Han, Luke, and Leia, Lando had to be immensely likable, distinctly exciting, but sympathetically human. And Billy D. Williams and George Lucas delivered. Lando was smart, suave, and noble. Even his act that's meant to get us to distrust him is, on second look, a move to make the best out of an impossible situation, and one to save both his people and the life of Han. In 5 and 6, he's shown to be a great leader, spy, pilot, and friend. And in Legends, he just kept getting better. Though it was hinted at in Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, Lando, Leia, and Luke in Legends are super close friends. They have so many exciting adventures, and the twins become as close to Lando as family. We also get to see him regain control of Cloud City, find love and get married, and even save the galaxy a few more times. We even got insight into his past, where we found that he was a treasure hunter, an amazing card player, and a good man, even in his scoundrel days. And sure, I'll bring it up. Lando was also important because he was a black male sci-fi character. He wasn't a black stereotype, but he also wasn't acting like he was an alien, either. A lot of young black boys saw themselves in Lando, and he helped bring Star Wars from a cult hit to a cultural icon. Lando was interesting, unique, and important. And then The Force Awakens came out. Throughout my first viewing, I really enjoyed it, but I kept wondering, where is Lando? EU Lando was always a member of any important event in the galaxy after the Battle of Endor, but we didn't even get as much as a referential line explaining where he was. I was somewhat willing to wait, though, as Lando was only in two of the original three movies. I could wait a few years. Unfortunately, The Last Jedi didn't so much as mention Lando either. Two movies in, and Lando hasn't made an appearance in the new trilogy. In fact, outside of the movie, in both novels and comics, Lando doesn't show up after the Galactic Civil War, save one short mention in Bloodline. He has a few adventures after the Battle of Endor, but nothing near the old factor of him being one of four main Star Wars characters. Even during the Civil War, he's a minor character, only appearing in two out of, so far, 67 issues of the Marvel series Star Wars. For contrast, Lando appeared in at least 50 of the old Marvel series, before Disney bought both companies. Now, Disney did give Lando two five-part miniseries comics that portrayed him as a more heroic figure, but that's still a far cry from main character status, especially when even Captain Phasma gets her own miniseries. But at least in those series, he's heroic. In October 2016, it was announced that Lando was going to feature prominently in Solo, a Star Wars story played by Donald Glover. The internet was ecstatic. The absence of Lando was not unnoticed, and the idea of getting to see him in live action again was amazing. And then the teaser trailer came out, 
and again everyone was ecstatic. I saw articles talking about how sure the writers were that Lando would steal the show, or that this movie should be called Lando, A Star Wars Story. And then the movie came out. It's, uh, it's... It's not... Look, this movie is a mixed bag. I think if anyone tells you that it's the worst Star Wars has ever been, it's an exaggeration. There's a lot going for this film. The tech feels advanced yet restricted like it did back in the original trilogy. Beckett and Enfys Nest are both interesting characters. I think Aaron Reich and Suotamo are both great at delivering the mannerisms of Ford and Mayhew respectively, while still giving their own twists on the characters. I actually think they both do a really good job, and for me the movie was at its strongest when it focused on these two. Less great as some other things. It's hard to tell if L3 was supposed to be a funny, quick-witted character that we were supposed to like, or an intentional parody of activism. But like, if it's the latter and droids are slaves, isn't slavery something that we should be opposed to as the audience? The movie feels confused with her, and as it ends with her becoming a sentient part of a physical object that can legally be traded in a game of cards, I think it's better left in the past. In fact, a lot of the tone of the movie feels confused, which I'm sure can be accredited to having two different sets of directors. Throughout the movie, you go back and forth between good opportunities for humor and just regular Star Wars drama. Obviously, you can do both, like Freemaker Adventures managed to do, but I recognize that that's a lot harder in live action. And then there's some things that are just plain bad. From a writing perspective, almost every single thing that Han references in the original trilogy happens over the course of one movie, making Han seem less like the seasoned adventurer we were led to believe he is, and more like a kid who can't shut up about his favorite weekend. Kira was also apparently going to be played by a woman of color, and they even listed eight women that were considered, only to say no, a white woman was the best woman for the job. Look, this is obviously not me saying that she had to be a woman of color, but they did this exact same thing with Rey. They went out of their way to say that they thought about casting a woman of color, but ultimately, and repeatedly, cast white brunettes as leads in Star Wars films. If you just quietly cast a white woman, people will assume that you just cast the person with the best audition. Sure, they'll think that it might have something to do with race, but probably not more than any other role. But when you specifically go out of your way, twice, to say that you looked all over to find a woman of color, but could only find a white woman who was good enough for you, you're sending forth the message that you want to seem progressive, but just prefer white people. I'm not saying that this is the fault of any one individual, but maybe don't hype up how diverse your potential cast is going to be if you'll ultimately end up with all but one main character being white. And no, I'm not counting Val as a main character. She survives for less than half of an arc, and her death is used to motivate her husband. I liked her relationship with Beckett, but only for the one minute that I saw it. Oh, and I guess Enfys Nest is biracial, although she's in a mask almost the entire movie. I'd say it's closer to Boba Fett being forced by a Maori man in the re-releases of Empire Strikes Back. It's diversity, but it's hidden. But I'm getting distracted. This video is about Lando, and Lando kind of goes beyond bad in this movie. Solo's Lando is awful. Now, I will give some credit where it's due. Glover does a decent Billy D. Williams voice, and I like that Lando keeps calling Han Han. And, uh, well, that's it. What's wrong with Lando, though? Well, he's introduced to us with a joke about his penis size. He's a gambler still, but he isn't even a good card player. He has to cheat to win. He isn't a great pilot. He threatens to brainwash his girlfriend. He technically owns his girlfriend, maybe. In Legends, he gets the disguise he uses in Java's Palace through an exciting adventure of his own, but in this, it's just some clothes Beckett owned. A la Dumbledore, we are told that Lando is pansexual, but this is just represented with him being with a female robot who is clearly coded as female. He's constantly flirting with women or draping them along. I mean, I know OT Lando flirted with Leia, but it's Leia. Come on. His adventures are hinted to possibly just be fabrications. He downloads his girlfriend's head into his ship, and then he bets his ship in a card game. Like, what? He abandons everyone, which, I mean, why not at this point? He's just overall treated like a joke. And yeah, you can be funny. Freemaker Adventures and the Lego Movie both have a funny Lando Calrissian, but this Lando is just incompetent, sexist, indecent, 
and in some ways, a bit of a black stereotype. Look, I've seen it argued that Lando was a bit of a stereotype in the original trilogy, but that's not how Williams played him, and he ultimately acted as a hero. And yes, I know that this is a prequel, but Han is selfish when we first see him, and he's heroic in this movie. Lando has to sacrifice one life to save hundreds when we first see him, and in this, he sacrifices several lives to save himself. For all the talk people give to Lando being a traitor, which he wasn't, but whatever, he was still a role model in the original trilogy. In Solo, black characters either die quickly or run away. It's just... It's not what we wanted when we said that we wanted to see Lando again. But, you know, we aren't at a point where the Lando we knew and love will never return. Yeah, I know, he's going to be in episode 9, and I'm really hoping he's great, but that's not what I mean. The stories we love may have been branded different things. Legends, non-canon, fan service for children, but no label will take them away. We enjoyed the stories about Lando. We loved the young Lando that was finding his way in the world, but was still ultimately a good person. We loved the cinematic Lando that went from being a legitimate businessman to a galactic hero. And we loved the old Lando that would never abandon his friends. We may not see him in new material again, but that Lando still exists. On screen, on text, and in our memories. And no matter what, that Lando will always be great.